So good afternoon, everyone. And I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order. Today is February 14th, 2018. 19. 19? <laughs> Sorry. And um, I just want to remind people that we are being taped. And if anyone here is taping anything, we'd like to know to make that public to us that you're taping. And um, just a reminder to the board, please, that the public will be speaking, but we're not to be responding. We're listening to what the public has to say. And we, we're going to take everything that you say under advisement with the possibility of Marie or Dennis speaking to you. But we, we're not going to have a debate, is basically is what's going to happen. So, um, and so, please uh, silence your, your cell phones. And so I can think we can start. Who wants to start from the public? Anne is going to start because she's from a different class. And could you identify yourself to sure. us, please? Um, my name is Anne Averill, and I'm in the intermediate class. And I kind of knew about of, this. Yeah, intermediate class of? Of, of TAP. Okay. With Carol. It's really important that you, we know what you're speaking of. Okay. So I knew that there were um, people that were dissatisfied with the floor, and I found out about this meeting right at class. So I just want to say that um, uh, even though I'm the only one here from my class, my class feels unanimously that they dislike the floor, um, that it's not a satisfactory ex tap experience at all. So this is the new math floor. The new math floor. Yeah, it's just no fun to to dance on, it doesn't have a good sound, it doesn't have a good feel, it kind of uh, catches your foot, it has an edge to it. If you're doing a dance in formation, uh, for example, today I was on the end, and you know, you're not looking at your feet while you're tapping, and when I came back to um, get back on the mat, I kind of uh, caught my foot on the edge. Um, you know, it's just, nobody likes it. So. I'm Heather McLaughlin, and I'm in the intermediate, advanced, beginner, or mixed, 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 mixed level. level. All right, um, and I'm going to start with point four. Uh, we have more than we have three main concerns about the floor, and that certainly our class will echo what Anne was saying. Doesn't provide a good tap experience, and the tap experience has a lot to do with differences of intensity in sound. And these have to be discernible, and you cannot on a plastic, on that plastic surface, hear the differences between your toe, the edges of your feet, your heels, all of that. And these are all subtle things that Carol actually demonstrates to us, and then we are to be trying to copy that, try to uh, play with that. Uh, the variety of sounds, it's to a non-tap person, you might not notice that, but there are a lot of parts of the feet that you have to work. It's a percussion instrument, and uh, it's not a good it's not a good feel. So uh, that's the first one. Um, secondly, there's more friction on that surface, and the taps are meant they they are meant to go on wood. Um, and anybody that's a tapper will have they have a practice mat. They have, they tap on wood. Uh, I don't know what the, the the taps are adjusted with the leather sole. So you've got leather soles, tap, and rubber in your heel, and it all moves with a lot of glide and slip, and you lift your feet up and move it around. When you have a surface that is plastic, it sticks. It's like tapping on a bath mat. That's <laughs> what it's like. Okay, so um, we've had some injuries. We've had people in every class, at least since I've been four weeks I've been there, Every class, someone has said, wow, that hurts. Uh, we are dancing around the periphery, on the wood. Any of those of us who had injuries, uh, just to stay off the plastic. Um, any case, uh, we have heard from people in the Tai Chi class that they have similar issues of wanting to move and glide and twist, and you can't do it satisfactorily. Three, um, just the way it's been set up, We've lost a space. We've lost uh, most of the, the classroom, the tap space, which is all around the periphery. Uh, clearly, it has to be either the whole floor 
or not. And, and in terms of an experimentation, we, at least in our two classes, feel it's uh, not working. It has to be taped along the edges because it's dangerous. It's up, it comes up about three quarters of an inch. Uh, and you have to have something to make it so that you can dance over it. Uh, it's too heavy and bulky to roll up before class. Uh, that's point four, and I'll turn this over to Lola. Lola. Hi, I'm Lola, Lola Reed. Uh, I'm in the, the mixed level uh, one o'clock tech class, um, and we're going back to, to one on your on your uh, little handout. The wood floor in the activity room was originally installed 12 years ago on Carol Wattlett's advice. She's the teacher, and she has told us numerous times that she was, when the plans were being made for uh, this building, she insisted that the floor be uh, appropriate for dancers and that it be a wooden floor. And she's very proud, she was very proud of that, of that wooden floor, which we've had for 12 years. Um, and uh, it, um, but the second point, why was it necessary to install the new covering? I know you can't answer that right now, but we'd love to have that answered. Uh, how and why was it decided to put the mat uh, over the floor? Um, and the, it was refinished this year for the first time. That's 12 years of use. Any wooden floor, I've got one in my kitchen, is going to need to be re refinished. You know, usually much sooner than that. Um, and occasionally now we have to use the, the wood floor, as, as Heather mentioned, uh, in back or on either side because of the number of tappers um, and, or the movement from left to right. Uh, and there, if you will go into that room, which we're next door to right now, and look on the side, you will see no scuffing. And there was, there was no scuffing where the, the mat was put over it. Um, in point number three, what was the cost of refinishing and how does it compare to the cost of the new floor covering, which will also have to be replaced in due time. Okay, and that's, that's it. Okay. I'm Mimi Texanian. Uh, I'm also in the mixed level tap class. And I, I guess I'd like to start just quickly uh, by uh, giving a shout out to Carol Watlett and the Senior Center for allowing me to fulfill a childhood dream of learning how to tap. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's been a great experience. Um, now, the original plan, as I gather, was to install <coughs> the new floor cover only for tap lessons, and then to roll it up after whips and store it until a week later. That turned out not to be possible because this type of floor covering <clears throat> has to be put in place, taped down, for and left there for three days before anyone can dance on it or do Tai Chi or whatever else. So <coughs> you end up with a part of the floor covered. The surround is not covered and people walk on it. I, I, when I walked in today, I found grit on the floor. Um, so that surround is going to get worn and it's going to need to be refinished eventually. And then the central mat will be taken up. And there is the pristine floor. So what was the point of covering it for? 10 years in order to get back to where you were in the first place. Now, my last point is, I, <coughs> I don't need to tell you, but I will remind you that the Senior Center mission statement suggests that one of its aims is to empower its senior members. Well, it seems to us that making this decision about installing floor covering without consultation with the teachers and the members of TAP 
classes, Tai Chi classes, other movement classes, uh, really undermines that purpose of empowerment. Guys, if you have one second, uh, I will add something. Huh? Okay, 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 I will. Thank you. Uh, so, okay, I'm Elena Neblitsky and I'm part of that tap group now, but I've done so many other things in life, so I'm, I consider myself a semi-professional dancer. And my tap uh, friends, they focus on this movement and that movement. Uh, I would say that the way I view that, it's more about us as people than it is about particular movement. Because obviously that bunch of people, including me of course, are extremely unhappy. And it's our emotional well-being. Of course if we hurt our knees and hips it will be just straight back. But you guys, probably some of you know that aging is not always about fun. And it's getting not easier to enjoy life. So obviously we feel like we lost a big part of our journey. And we feel even worse if we don't feel that we're supported by you because it's an important part of our life. And one more thing that people who come new, who come to TAP, they absolutely know nothing about it. And we want them to love that. We want their lives to become kind of dense. But they will not get any taste of it because it's just not enjoyable to move on that, and probably this surface is good for something, but it's, for many dancers, it's not good, and we're not professionals. So it's not like we're trying to create a surface for, particularly for tap, but the surface which was there was good for almost everything. Uh, and that's kind of generic surface for any physical activities, so less damaging, less sticky. So, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did you all get um, the, the letter that Don Ackerman sent, or did you get a copy of Ron Ackerman? I'm sorry. Yeah, we did. I got it. Oh, okay. he, he addressed it to just two of us. Okay. All right. Um, I want to thank you very much for uh, this time, for giving us this time to express our, our feelings about um, the, the uh, floor that's been put down, the, the modeling floor that's been put down. And um, we look forward to hearing uh, some of the answers to these questions. I'm not sure how that can happen. Um, but Bottom line is, would you want to dance on a back mat? <laughs> Do you want us to stay? Would you like us to? Uh, I'm happy to. We can just tell you some basic facts that we know, uh, and I'll start by saying the floor um, has been, it's been the past two directors here at um, the Senior Center have had that on their agenda to refinish that floor. The floor was very much damaged and cost $3,000 to have it refinished. So it's been 12 years and $3,000. So those are just some some of the facts that you, you don't seem to have about that. Is there something? Um, what cost $3,000? The refinishing of the floor. The refinishing. The refinishing. Thank you. So. Um, yeah, and the floor was never intended to be kept in that room in that way. So, um, taped down to, for part of floor. Um, the new flooring was not meant to be installed in that way. So um, it was our intention that you would have as much space as you have had. Um, and we actually did consult with many dance schools, including the Arts Trust, about the kind of flooring to get. And we purchased it from a reputable dance flooring company. Um, and the mayor um, agreed that it made sense to have uh, flooring that was specific for tap dancing rather than to continue to have to refinish the wood uh, because it, 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 we had to remove quite a bit of wood to remove the damage. So if we keep doing that, we won't have wood left 
Um, and so installing another wood floor would cost a lot more. Um, and we, because we've been increasing the amount of fitness classes, um, it makes more sense to have TAP happen in another room with floor that is specific for that need um, and allow all the other uses to be with the wood. So that is the direction that I've been focused on, but because there's been so much um, pushback around this because people aren't happy, we have not moved forward with doing anything. Um, <coughs> so it continues to be installed in the way that it is now, but that was not the intention. Um, so um, if people are getting injured, that is, that's not good. Um, and I, that's the first I'm hearing about it. So um, we should not have it, and we should have more of it installed in order to not have two different surfaces being encountered. Um, and we, we really did our research on this, so I'm sorry that it, people don't like the flooring, but it is specifically made for tap dancing. Um, and I did speak with Carol about it before this happened. Before we ordered it, I spoke with Carol. Um, so it's not that we didn't consult her. So I'm not sure if I answered all of these. Um, so I think that's our response for now, and, and we're going to take it under further advisement. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, so if people have had enough time to review the minutes from the last meeting, I would like to know if people would like to make a motion to approve the minutes. So Second. 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 Moved by Dennis. Seconded by Cindy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstain. Uh, just so that people know, I, I, uh, one of the announcements I have is that Bob Montague decided to resign from the board as of today. He just gave me a letter today saying he resigned. So, anyone else have an announcement? Is it okay to ask a question in reference to that announcement? Bob. Bob? Bob what you said about that? Uh, I don't have any answers. No, no, it's okay. not, I'm not asking why I have a a question that's very relevant. Um, I wanted to help clarify or have you all help clarify how many open positions there are now on the board and what the process is for people if anyone's interested in applying. And I saw the great article and it mentioned, you know, that there were a couple spots open and I was curious if there was any feedback if anyone called in and said I'm interested in being on the board. So hearing that Bob is not on it anymore now, it, it seemed like a good time to learn about this. Okay, go ahead, Doug. Uh, well, like I put in the article, there's one vacancy. We can have up to 15 um, under the charter, but it doesn't mean you have to have 15. Mm -hmm. It's up to the mayor to decide how many people she or he wants to appoint. Mm -hmm. So technically, there's one vacancy, and with Bob's vacancy, there's two. So that's what um, I thought. Yeah. So, but the mayor gets to decide what the number is, and then people um, apply to the mayor's office, like many of you actually did. The if anybody calls here, I, I assume you refer them mm -hmm. to the mayor's office, because. Mm -hmm. um, but if you know of anybody that might be interested, then I would refer them to the Directly. office of the mayor. Okay. There's also the online application process to the mm -hmm. boards and commissions on the city that you sh that they yes. should fill in. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just to get updates? I've been a while since you applied, but I know when I applied, it's not it's not the application. It's then 
there's a city council committee that, mm -hmm. and basically there's an interview by someone in that council community right. and then it goes back to the mayor so it's not right. right it's not the mayor's the ultimate decider but there's right much more involved in the city council than there had been right. in the past he appoint he recommends to appoint they interview then they say whether or not they They'll agree exactly mm -hmm. okay oh yes jean I assume so. I heard anything different. Do, do we have to find somebody to be a liaison for division? Is that something that's like something Well, De Deborah is also on elder vision. Okay. So, so I'm happy to play that role. Yeah, I just found out about it just before the meeting. He's, right. He left a, a note for me. So it's the first I've heard of it. That was a good question. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to old business and talk about the policy on guests under 55. Yes, yeah, so um, as I've said before, we, we will have events where we, are, we will be saying this is open to the public or this is open to for intergenerational, it's an intergenerational activity or this is a family event, bring your family. Um, but otherwise, our programming is for people from 55 and up um, until we designate certain programming that's from 55 to 59. Basically, everything is open to anyone over 55 um, because we haven't designated specific things. But well, you're allowed, to, people can come in the building and, I mean, and sit on a couch, right? If they aren't 55? If they aren't 55, no. No, um, so if somebody brings a caregiver and they're under 55, that's fine. If somebody brings, say, um, someone comes and they, they um, are coming in briefly and they have someone who's under 55 with them and it's they're just visiting to come in to pick something up or something, that's fine. But um, otherwise, we would have our lobby full of no, people know, all day I long. That's yeah. I meant as a as yes. a so you can be guests to do basically. Um, well so I that's mean not to get us not to get services, but you can mm -hmm. come in the building if you're accompanied by a person who is a member um, for you know, the a reason of like either assisting them or accompanying them. Yeah, we have, we definitely caregivers are mm -hmm. more than welcome to come with the person that they're caregiving for, and then um, it, people who are just stopping by to say, like we've had people who bring in, come with their mother to help mm -hmm. her, their mother s mm -hmm. sign up and learn about what we offer here. Um, we are, you know, we want to engage caregivers and family members in helping people to access services here. But we can't have, and we do often, have people coming in and thinking that this is a public building that they can just hang out in. Right. And so that's the differentiation we're making. We do have some programs that are for people who are low income. And so those people, I think there's confusion sometimes because there are people who are getting services here for brown bag or for interfaith or things like that where those aren't just for seniors. <clears throat> and so, you know, we are looking at how to, how do we make sure that people know where to go and are in the right place? Because we don't want someone who's here to, to sign up for interfaith, help with interfaith, um, hanging out in the pool room or going to hang out in the computer room and use mm -hmm. the computers and things like that. Because, because then all those rules about that this is a senior center and our programs are for seniors, then kind of go out the window. It's, um, we can't, you know, we're a senior center, we don't want to have, um, unless people know they're going into an intergenerational activity or uh, um, they shouldn't go into an activity and find that there are people in there that aren't seniors. Like that is a senior center, this is programming for seniors, um, and our funding is to provide programming and services for seniors. How are people who Kathy was next. I'm yeah. sorry, Michael. She I, said I just have a question, just it's more pragmatic. 
that, um, and because I've, obviously everybody knows I work a lot at the coffee shop, do I have to card people then to make sure they're over 55? Cause I'm, I'm serious, because I, I, I can't tell how old people are. If you, if you don't recognize them as someone who comes here and you and you think they might not be a senior, you can ask them if they're a senior. So our um, mm -hmm. volunteer who works in Major D stand for lunches, um, there are some city employees that come in mm -hmm. to buy lunch and take it to go. There are people yeah. who buy their lunch. Um, and so she she needs to ask people if they're mm -hmm. a senior because we are giving seniors a discount. Right. We right. don't. And you know, so it is something that we need to be comfortable doing. And, um, and then if they, if they they say they're not, we just ask them to leave. That's what the, the, the policy is. Um, I think that if you want some talking points, then we can talk yeah, about that. Yeah, Pardon. Because we don't have to be rude. No. I think that oh, I know that. We need to explain mm -hmm. that there are reasons why mm -hmm. we we are our funding is mm -hmm. to serve people over sixty. Mm -hmm. um, we're not supposed to use our mm -hmm. funding that's for people over sixty for people who are fifty six, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. So we and we need to. Um, just explain that mm -hmm. and say that you know it's one of the only places where things are identified as for the senior population, and that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I do have a. I just and when people added. become a senior, they will be welcome mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. access those resources. I, I know that Michael and a few other people are talking, but I just wanted to add. You know, should there be an article in the Chronicle or maybe in the newspaper about this? Because I think people are in a mis misunderstanding. So they just don't know. So people don't know. I mean, that's the honor. Well, because in the past, it's not always been um, something that I think has people have been able to pay attention to or to enforce. Uh, there was, when, before I came on, there were a lot of rentals going on mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. And so there were people in the building for right. all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, we are not renting during the day anymore. We are mm -hmm. preserving our space for programming for seniors and we've added a mm -hmm. lot of programming. Um, and people are happy about that. So mm -hmm. we are actually putting our energy and our capacity into mm -hmm. doing what we are meant to be doing and we're using the space for what it's meant to be used for, and then we are opening up the space to be used by other groups when we're closed. And we are still allowing a community to be served by this mm -hmm. building, but we have to keep it to a certain percentage mm -hmm. uh, because of our community block grant funding. Right, right. Michael? Before some of the members came, mentioned briefly a bit of a blow up that happened today, it led me to Essentially, I guess a similar concern that Kathy mentioned, which is to say, I'm not sure how well informed lots of folks are. On the one hand, one attitude might be, well, do we have to tell them the obvious? I think we do. Uh, I think part of being clear about our mission is making it clear. I wonder if a solid helpful article in the Chronicle that makes things clear mm -hmm. wouldn't be a benefit. Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like if this guy goes to the Gazette, there's more crap that will come out and you know, more go back for you. And one way to deal with it in advance, I suspect, is to be as clear as we can be, um, as public as we can be. And I don't think that would cause resentment. I think you know, those people who might feel, oh, I wish I could go, but they'll know now why um, our policy is what it is, and you maybe won't be faced with the kind of stuff that you were earlier today. Michael, that's one of the reasons why we have the code of conduct, and we ask people to sign it, like that everybody reads it and signs it, because the first line of it talks about the program, and there was a, a small <laughs> death who about, because it was the, Young at Heart Chorus, everybody wants to see the Young at Heart Chorus, so I, I know that that makes people make a mistake that way, but it does say very clearly on our code of conduct that most seniors should be signing, you know, we're, we're asking people to do that when they come in. That's not really addressing so, that point. My point yeah. was what Kathy was suggesting. Would it make sense 
to have the solid article in the chronicle. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not negating that. I'm not negating that. I'm just okay. saying that no, you're saying asking that. the seniors to That to I know, because we talked about it, and I read it. Right. I understand. But, but My I'm point on. was the simple point. And I think more than just the chronicle, it should be in the Gazette, because well, the Chronicle reaches older people, and that's who we want to come here. But however, you know, some of the other people may not read the Chronicle. They're younger, they're not the people, so how would they get notice of this? Go, Deborah, did, you had a question after Michael, did you? I'm sorry, I could, actually, I, I don't remember right now okay. the exact word, so <laughs> I'll go after you. Yeah. I, I just want to second that third, and I agree, and I think, Marie, you hit on it. Um, this building is used for a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge perception that it is more of a community center. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all know that programming during the day is not you know, rental, but the world doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. So right. I think it's really an educational thing. And I think with whatever polite wording, mm -hmm. a pretty big sign near the front door. Mm -hmm. Right. In mm -hmm. addition to that, just to remind the people point. who come in and yeah, brown bag is during the day, and yeah, brown bag is primarily for older adults, but it isn't exclusively. Income tax assistance, you're going to see some young, I mean, there are going to be people here during the day, you are younger, for very t specific programs. So I think somehow a, a welcoming way to, you know, what the building's used for, in addition to a chronicle and gazette. Okay, but one thing I was wondering about is, and I agree with what my comrades here have <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> but I, uh, I also had a question about when you did mention the signing of the code of conduct. Uh, I'm just curious, and I may have missed it at some point, so forgive me, but I'm just curious. <coughs> because that's a new policy, when I'm curious about is that for all new members after a certain date, or was there a process by which it went back to everybody who's already a member and were asked to sign? Mm -hmm. It's not a new policy. No, well, the oh, new, sign. new... It's for everyone, new everyone that to we, sign. Everybody, when they key in, yeah. is, is given the opportunity to see that there's a code of conduct for them to sign. Every time one of us signs in, every time we sign the computer. So it's, yeah. it, we want everybody to see it and to sign it. I don't know that how, how well it's been. And it's posted around the building, but new members would be given this. That's what I'm curious about members. So new members starting from like January 1st or? or We're asking day. all members to sign it. On the, when you scan in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, and then we're giving it to The reality members. check is click yes, move on. People, I agree with your point, Jerry. It needs to be bigger. It needs to be more broadcast. People aren't giving all the fine details of that very compact document. I think, I think whatever we can do proactively yeah. to just that's the bottom line. get people in, in a number of ways so that you can point when something happens again. I, want, I, I just thought that maybe it, you know, the sign on the door would be a good idea because the people who are going to look at that are the people who are the members, assuming you know, that they're paying attention. But the people who are talking about probably not members and they're not going to have seen the code of conduct. Right. So I wondered if, like, on the door, if there was, a, like, a way of just saying, you know, that we, we're here, that Northampton probably serves all um, people, all, all of its members, um, 55 and older, or 60, or whatever, you know, whatever. Um, all others, please check in at the desk. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that at least... Because then there would be somebody there who could like say, "I hear you. That's why. I, but that's you know, you're here to accompany so and so because they need a caregiver, right? Thank you. Here's your visitor pass. Yeah. I mean, because that's in the school system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody got a slap down a visitor mm -hmm. pass. But um, but at least you know, it, I I feel as if there ought to be a way that you can function like a thing that says guest. You know, like that there ought to be. I understand that you have to like home, narrow the field, and that you know that people can't wander in off the street and all that. But it feels like they're also, in order to serve seniors, I feel like we have to be able to also allow a guesting in for a good reason. And we yeah, we we haven't asked guests to leave um, unless they 
but that but been that using means, they're in like we found you know like a woman in her 40s with you know, an older man in the computer room using the computers and we say you have to be a member to use the computer room and you have to be a senior right. to be but a member so, so these so. are all things that mm -hmm. if, if guests had to like just sign into the guest mm -hmm. book at the time in mm -hmm. and a time out mm -hmm. and who they were the guests of mm -hmm. Why even does this? You know, like mm -hmm. then, then there would be a thing that you know, they, where they can understand what what they are right. allowed to do while they're here, and that's you know, yes. Like, you know. And I think that you know we need to implement some things now, and we also will be when we are doing our space use assessment with an architect with the capital planning, the capital improvement funding when we get that we will be looking at how our space is set up so that we can better engage people as they come into the building because right now it isn't really set up in a way that is engaging or helps you to orient when you come in to someone who can direct you to where you need to go. It's really just an expansion of being clear of like you did yeah. with the conduct, you know? It's yes. just an expansion of just making things clear because mm -hmm. that way people know what the rules are and then they can know not to break them. We have to be careful with guests that guests are not are not allowed like in the classrooms. They can't take the class. They can't be in the gym. Right, so we have to but delineate. This, yes, gives, this gives to, them a place where know, they can be given information. Yes, and um, and you know if it ends up being just a little card that people get, you know, along with it if, to, to take if they choose to, you mm -hmm. know. But um, but it just it feels like there's a lack of clarification. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and I and we will be trying to implement some things, and we're looking at. Um, you know all the ways that we encounter new members and help them orient and how we welcome them and the messages that we're giving them mm -hmm. about the way things are conducted here because I think there's been a lack of consistency and there's been a few diff you know there's been a couple different directors before me who've done things differently than each other even so things have changed a lot over the years um, and I think that people are not sure um, and so that's we are creating policy so some people are kind of saying like well why is it changing or I didn't ever know like people thought this code of conduct they didn't even some of them didn't even know we ever had one before they thought we just created all these rules and in fact we we actually just added vaping to the, <laughs> the rules that were already in place um, so um, but I, I think also you can we all know that you can give and give and give information and not everyone takes it in or reads it right. or pay you know so but when we, don't give it, nobody. Yeah, we are giving it so we just haven't Constantly. fixed all the problems yet and we when we encounter someone who doesn't have the information or hasn't paid attention they don't all they feel they may feel like that's punitive because it's different than what they're used to um, so what I'm trying to do is to make sure that we're explaining why why we have policies why you know some people take offense at having a code of conduct because they don't misbehave and so they don't need rules and we say well some people do need rules and, and every institution needs to have some guidelines everywhere you go people have guidelines about what's expected in a building you can't bring a dog in this building you can in this one you know so um, it's it's all it's all meant with the best of intentions and it's because we all have to get along in this space mm -hmm. okay can we move on yeah i just want to say i i think that gene's analogy to schools something that have been going through my head you know a school is a public building but none of us can just walk in and out of it um willy-nilly and I, I love the idea of a guest sticker with mm -hmm. me the Kathy, your question, you know, if I'm a guest, it's pretty clear. I'm mm -hmm. an orange stick, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm visible. Right. And you're not going to have me start taking tap dancing. Because um, the guess. floor sticks. But no. I, think, I think there's kind of things that just sort of help. And yes, the code of conduct is there. And some people are going to read it, and most people are not. So and people forget to acknowledge mm -hmm. that. And well, it, it, sure, sure. To have the code of conduct lets us go back and say to people, sure. you know, oh, we yes. do, we did have this. You may have missed it because we are we are getting a lot of different 
negative complaints from people as we move forward here and, and use the space as best we can at the senior mm -hmm. center. And you know, um, you know, just off, <coughs> you know, to address the the dancers, we cannot ask every dancer what their opinion is and incorporate it into the program at the senior center. It's just not feasible, you know. It, and then, so when pro, when things change, then you're going to hear what other sure. people have to mm -hmm. say about it, which is fine, but it doesn't mean that, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the change the way they like it or the way it, it is. Um, I don't want to belabor the point because I know we need to get on, but I would just want to second what everybody has said in terms of uh, refocusing the topic as policy on guests under 55. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like what, I mean, I had said earlier, you shouldn't have to state the obvious, but like you said, Michael, well, sometimes you do because it's, uh, What's obvious to one is not to right. another. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was thinking maybe in one of your articles in the Chronicle, do what you had suggested, Kathy, start there of, uh, so you understand the Senior Center is for seniors and their programming is for seniors. You may see some other people who are not, they are not guests, they are not caregivers, they come for specific, but you know, something that's very mm -hmm. clear about that. Um, and so I would second, you know yeah. what the both of you said, and then the third thing I would, thir the third thing I would third, would be uh, uh, like you had said, Kathy. It's very difficult to go. Are you a senior? Right. Uh, you know, I mean, but I, I think a better way to do it, piggybacking on the Jean and your Cynthia's mm -hmm. thing about guests, is um, are you a member of the senior center? Because then you have to be a senior. So if you know, mm -hmm. we understand that workers, DPW workers, may come and get their lunch, and they're coming, they're going. But an easy way to say is, are you a member of it? And it's much it's much harder for them to lie about that. I, maybe, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that, but. Right, well, some people aren't members and are coming for like a yeah. one-time event. Well, yeah, yeah, but if they're, or yeah, maybe they yeah. so, yeah. have yeah. people drinking, opening. Oh, no, would you like to sign up? Here's what right. happens. Let me shut, let me right. have mm -hmm. you. But it's a great opener to that. Right. And there are municipal meetings and stuff that had been in the past. I don't know if you're not doing them now. Right. There are municipal meetings here during the day, right. um, but but I don't think we should be afraid to ask people if they are yeah. seniors because we also have pricing for things that are as different mm -hmm. for right. seniors Sometimes and non-seniors, right. um, and mm -hmm. the lunches, the programming. Um, if you're not a senior, you pay a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a blue dot on my lapel if I'm here for a municipal meeting. Something, mm -hmm. again, you know, mm -hmm. everyone does those kinds of things these days. You know, as much for security, et cetera, as anything mm -hmm. else. Just okay. identifiers. I would like yeah. to move on yeah. to the Golden Age meal tax exception. So I realized after um, that we signed the forms to send in that we had just changed the bylaws to take the treasurer out of our bylaws and and they require that we have a treasurer so um, uh, I didn't send it in yet so now I'm uh, Dennis was suggesting that maybe I just have a letter come from the financial director from the city and that might take care of it so. saying we actually have no funds there's no treasurer treasury for the treasurer to treasure <laughs> and that in fact everything goes through the finance department so my suggestion was hopefully um, and so I will I will do that and that if we were to get that then we would definitely need to card people because only seniors would get tax free. Right. Okay. You have your tax free card. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. On to new business. Increasing the uh, Council on Aging member visibility, introduction of members through the Chronicle articles, mechanism for public feedback. Yeah, okay, so um, what I had spoken with Jamie Ann and Marie about, um, and other people, was since a lot of new people were new in the console, it's like people don't know who we are, what we do, that was part of the confusion, some of the confusion that's out there. Um, so I had broached the um, subject of, well, why don't we introduce who we are and what we do, um, which was the first article that Jerry and I, and I put in the, um, in the Chronicle to say this is a, uh, who we are, this is what our mission is, this is what we do, we're going to introduce uh, people as we go through the following Chronicle months. Um, the Marie contacted the mayor's office who set up an email for us that currently is um, 
uh, goes to Jerry Ann because it can't go to everybody the way the IT, you know, so it, if people want to contact the console, they can email, there's an actual address that goes to Jerry Ann. Um, and Is that in the article? Yeah, that was in the article yes, as well. It, yeah, the, the, uh, the address That's is, how people will know. Yeah, that's how people know it was in there yeah. as well. So then I contacted, um, uh, our Eliana responded from here saying, um, we definitely have room for a column every month. For space, generally 350 to 450 words is about right, but we could extend it a bit if we needed. Um, the deadline, uh, they changed the deadlines so it, it, it's too late for March because it was, um, well, it's March 1st. So the deadline for writing is March 1st, April 1st, so we in the first of the month. So what I wanted to do was broach that to everybody saying this is what we were hoping to do and get volunteers to sign up maybe two or three at a time, you know, from March 1st, April 1st, that just says a little bit about, hi, this is who I am. I joined the console for whatever, you know, whatever you want to say about yourself. Um, and then that way, uh, we can also get that same email address. Mm -hmm. If you wish to contact it, you know, get that out there in multiple chronicles about how to get uh, feedback. Um, and then um, Jerry Ann and Marie and I had talked. I said, some feedback, obviously, it's, you know, I think you're all crazy and you don't do anything. Well, mm -hmm. well you know, we wouldn't necessarily share that. Some things, that's an easy answer. I was wondering about this. Actually, if you contact the volunteer coordinator and we shuttle it off to Kim. So other things where it might actually be brought to the council, then Jerry Ann and I and Marie might talk and say, oh, this seems to be a legitimate thing to add to the agenda. And then we would add it to the agenda um, to bring whatever that issue, concern, or, or a matter was to the full council. And then it would be on the agenda. So that was sort of the big picture thing of what we were thinking about. Is there a suggestion box here? Yeah, there is. So well, wouldn't that be, would that be a thing that you would, could, do we need to do something more than we have a suggestion box? Well, that, that's what this will serve is, um, so we are going to put it in the, the inside cover of the Chronicle oh. under the listing of all the board members that it, we're going to put it there. So it'll be in every issue that says, this is the way that you can contact the council, con contact the council um, and when our meetings are and stuff like that. But um, the suggestion box doesn't really serve the purpose of that it should. Um, people often, I mean, I think some people just, they don't want to identify themselves, so they just complain in it and they don't say, you know, I want to talk to you about this or I, you know, I can't give them an answer because they don't identify themselves. So. Um, I just felt like there needs to be a mechanism for people to actually bring something forward. Um, and I thought it might be helpful if it's not just me having to respond, but that it can be brought to the board mm. or the council. Yeah, yeah. Kathy? So the suggestion box is just who reads this? I mean, so are we doing away with that? And then who reads No, the we're not doing it. Who reads oh. the suggestions? Who I do. Okay. I do. And mm -hmm. it. Um, it's, it's, you know, sometimes uh, there's useful stuff in there, but mostly I think that it serves as sort of a, a venting box. Yeah, right. And there's no name again. And we have received email, and I've received message. I have a mailbox now, too, in, in the office, so we are getting feedback. We did get at least one email, and so we got one thing about regarding the floor, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please make a suggestion on focusing it to you, Dennis, is rather than to take for like 10 months to introduce the board, can we just do one article yeah. with a short, you know, we, people don't need to know 500 things. Yeah, like I'm blurred. open to whatever works. Yeah, just a little blurb. Then you should have got the whole group at one time. Maybe we can have a group photo. And figure out, you know, X number of words, basically, you know, a little bit of that background. Well, we have up to 450 word, uh, totally. words for one article. Would you like to do that? For one article. Mm, that for one article. Write a little article. 450 words. Well, so, so we can't we get, get more from you? Well, I think as much space as we need, right? I, I guess what you were thinking was that it would also be a way for the council to tell people about the issues that the council is 
addressing or that or a little bit about or, yourself it could be anything you're right it doesn't have to go on and on i just wanted to <coughs> have people know who you were what the photo your photograph would be mm -hmm. in like ours were so and then go, they could come they then right. they know who you are and they can right. approach I, I you get and that say right, but i'm su I was sort of suggesting can we do it just once can we just yeah. do it once get everyone yeah. in there get more space in our own paper um, right. and then Article three is about some of the issues right. that are coming up, but we don't all have to right. identify individual issues. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be more efficient to have everyone identify the same. No, I like that better too. But I was going along <coughs> with yeah, we just with, need uh, more space. If we can, yeah, if we don't have enough space, and, more, yeah. But I'm open to that. If we can get a little more space, Take so little maybe little for the. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, a, or if the deadline is March first, if everybody just sends to Jerry Ann. Can you just email us a little form? So I mean, how many characters you? Yeah, like a couple say, of lines about who you are. Then get back in one email and then right. cut and paste. So we're just sending in tweets. Yeah, you could do a tweet. Right? <laughs> there you go. You could do that. Uh, Casey, yeah. you had a question. Well, I was thinking, what if we? So, what if there was a list of questions? And we kind of answered them. So okay. everybody has sort of, yeah. Yeah. they're getting the same kind of information yeah. about each it. of us. Not oh, like, yeah. 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 It, you know, so it doesn't kind of wander sure. off. It's right. right, exactly. My dog's name is Rover. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, maybe you can have pets. So we all answer that, but not just my dog's name is Rover and completely <laughs> random information about people, but think, you know, things that we think. Would be good. And just a quick list of questions. I wonder if it's five, we but I come to the building. Right? <laughs> every week, every month. Um, but even if we did, um, if it was a space consideration, then even if we did half in March and half right. in April, right. then right. it gets us out there That's twice good. with yeah. some information. And yeah, I like that. But we're all doing yeah. No, we're not too late this. for March. So if so there's. That's April, so we see how much we're there. April. So March 1st and April 1st. So there's 14 of us. We've already done two. So if we did six well, and six, six, and six, does that sound good? Yeah. No, thirteen. No, fourteen. Well, oh no, they're thirteen. You're right. Sorry, math is not my strong suit. So eleven, so five, six. Well, <laughs> we mark change stuff too. What about where Mark doesn't come? So does that That's still have to be Yeah, but that's the same thing. Yeah. 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 Um, work with Dennis and Adam. Okay, if you and I maybe work up with some questions, yeah. and then we can send it out to everybody, and then mm -hmm. if six of us, because I agree Mark probably won't answer, but I can't speak for him, obviously. So if we did six and seven, or six and six, or... Yeah. I like that, and then we can at least try to either get everybody in March 1st, and if not, March 1st, I April like 1st. And if Eliana can, depending on the words, if she said, you know, we could extend it a bit if needed, you know, we could, I could just contact her and say, here's what we have. Could, can this work? But I like your idea of get, just getting it over with, so to speak. <laughs> Do you want volunteers to be who the first six will be at this point? And no, we'll just we'll find we'll out a few three. questions. We'll figure out how much yeah. space you can. And see what the answers <coughs> are, and yeah. then we'll forget, we can count the words. So let's get, get oh, it from but everybody. But she has a different right. question, though. Oh, yeah. oh, you're saying get everybody's, and then yes. how right. would you decide who goes first? Or you may be able to do everybody. If everybody answers the questions and it's 600 words, Eliana may say, oh, well, and no, I can through. do that. Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant. Thank you. Versus 1,000 words, no, now it's two 500s. Yeah. We'll take 100 words from Marie. <laughs> 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 we're not doing Marie. We're doing this. No, she's saying no, words from. from. Oh, from oh, her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on let's to the uh, membership orientation packet materials, which are in front of you. And so um, this is just an expansion of what I brought up a couple months ago. So what I did was took the liberty before I went away on vacation. Um, to just put the basic things that we talked about. Um, and, you know, so, it, you know, the table of context explains everything. There should be copies of everything in there so you understand. Um, some things may not apply, but you want so that you understand the meeting call to order standard language. Who's ever doing that? Uh, you know, there's the template for what the uh, agenda is going to look like. Um, then what I did was I took the. Um, 
Uh, what's the name of that organization? The guide. The Executive Office of Elder Affairs guide, which half of it didn't apply to us, and then we rewrote it um, for the NCO member guide role and responsibility. So like you were talking about, Gene, it's like I read the, the Executive Office one, but it didn't apply, so it made it apply to us. And then I just included, you know, the bylaws, the code of con, all that kind of stuff. Then it was all of the legal things that were required to, to do, which is the open meeting law, the conflict of interest, the state summary. Then I added other resources, um, you know, that we know about Elder Vision, Highland Valley, Northampton neighbors. So there's just little blurbs about that at the end. I had talked to a few members about, well, could we have all of the resources that the Senior Center and the Senior Services Department gives? Um, which was a good idea, except for that gets just to be too much. So I put your informational additions reference that you can do. Uh, so if you want to pick up about the senior work program and add it, because the staff here is going to have to maintain this going forward, so I didn't want to have as, as information got outdated, changed, contact numbers. Just This is just the basic of who we are, what we do. This is the rules we're supposed to follow and then you can put anything else you want in there. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the guiding principle. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yes, it's, I sent everything here. So that they can maintain it. <laughs> and so you do talk about the EOEA, right? Here in here, so people know what that is. Uh, I can't remember off the top I of my so. head. I think so, okay, yeah, all right. Volunteer recruitment is an ongoing process. I'm happy to report that over the past about week and a half, I've met or talked to with six or seven new volunteers that we're trying to match uh, their passions and interests with some needs here. Uh, we have uh, a need at the moment for dispatch, um, so I'm going to specifically be trying to recruit for that uh, to help set up rides uh, to appointments. Um, also, an ongoing need for our uh, bistro and coffee shop, just to make sure that we've got all of those openings covered, um, and also have a couple subs in place as well, so that if a volunteer can't come in on a given day, that we've got some resources, some people that we can call to help cover that. Um, as of right now, of all, all of our reception blocks of time are filled, which are great. We do Ooh, have yay, a couple, yay. that's a big, yeah. big plus. Um, and we do have a couple people as well that we can call for subs and that are flexible with their schedule. Um, certainly doesn't hurt to recruit a few more receptionists as we go, especially as we look at how we're welcoming new, new patrons and some of the new initiatives we have going, we'll be adding as we go. Uh, the two focus groups that are meeting, just to give you a short update uh, for them, uh, the arts and culture focus group right now has a total of eight people interested in that. Uh, the next meeting is going to be on Wednesday, March 6th. 
Um, we're having a little bit of a struggle to find the ideal time for everyone to participate. I think we're going to try and meet the first week of the month and just kind of settle either Wednesday morning or afternoon. Seems to be the best at this point, but we'll continue to kind of massage that a little bit to see what works best for everyone. Uh, the movie committee is also, also has eight members. Eight's the magic number on these two focus groups so far. <laughs> Uh, the movie committee is meeting the last Thursday of every month at 12.30, and they officially now are choosing the movies uh, for the Thursday movie matinees, so they're up and running um, as well with that. And hopefully we'll get some people involved in also helping to pick the movies up and kind of be involved in each of those um, parts of the process, not just selecting the movies itself, but helping to introduce the movies and, and you know every, every piece of it from start to finish. Uh, they also are interested in doing some discussion groups, um, so there'll be uh, two showings of two different versions of A Star is Born, followed by a discussion group of compare and contrast, and so they've got a lot of great ideas around different themes and different, uh, different pieces just to, to build upon the movie itself. I think for me, that's about it for the moment. I, again, recruiting's going to be ongoing. Um, I did set up in the lobby for a little bit to talk about some volunteer opportunities and spoke with a few people, and I'll continue to schedule those kind of interspersed as we move forward to make sure that we've got the people on board to help. Quick question. Are volunteers necessarily all seniors? No. No. The majority are. The majority are. But you can be a volunteer if you're not a senior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can volunteers use resources in the center? No. 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 Unless they're senior. Unless they're senior. Right, unless they're senior. Non-senior. Yes, non Non-senior, non correct. And the other thing, too, just to add, is we're in the process of updating the volunteer manual and handbook and putting uh, onboarding training in place as well. Um, so that's really an area over the next couple of weeks that I'll be focusing right. on um, so that it'll be a general training for all volunteers, mm -hmm. as well as then some specific training depending on the role that volunteers will have as well. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's reception or coffee shop or dispatch, <coughs> Medical transportation, any piece of that, you know, there's obviously specific to those roles. Uh, we'll cover that. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks I'll be able to give you an update on the process of that. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Marie, director's report. So um, I'll start with the capital improvement request. Uh, the mayor did send it on to city council and it will be reviewed and voted on. I'm guessing it will be decided on hopefully the 21st um, and so uh, most of my requests went through so that I, well they're on it they, they weren't taken off um, in his his um, draft that he sent on to them so they the request I made for um, improvements around technology is on um, going forward for their review and for the um, architect design work on use of space here, um, especially in the lobby and reception area. So, the technology of the I was wondering the same. So upgrades, so for instance, um, we probably need to upgrade the projector oh, okay. that's in the in the great room. We all, all we, technology, not just. All technology, so yeah. any kind of communications, yeah. um, you know, we'd like to have more sign, you know, screens that have signage. Um, also, our, um, I, I requested um, funding to have laptops that people can check out rather than just having um, desktops because I think that um, you know we're, the computer room doesn't get you know there are like 12 computers in there and they, they don't all get used and then I think that people do want to sit in the cafe or sit in the lobby or we can then do a class in any room. So check out not out of the building. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering that too. Yeah. Oh, Kathy, I have two things. Um, I can't remember the first one, but um, if you do do, you know, for laptops, make sure you, you check out on electrical outlets if people want to come in because it's pretty limited in the coffee shop. And then the um, thing. Oh, the who is the architect that you're working with that we're working with? We haven't gotten the funding yet, okay. so we don't okay. have an okay. architect. And will they have, um, they'll have age friendly, you know, be like mm -hmm. designated as knowing how to work with people with age friendly? Absolutely. Because so, not all architects are age friendly, mm -hmm. just like lawyers. <laughs> yes. Or have an understanding of how to welcome people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I'm, uh, anything else? 
happens with the capital improvements are, are oh, I'm sorry, Tom. I think if we made it possible for people to give suggestions about the space, people who, you know, like us or anybody who's spent time here who has an idea about what would be helpful, we could get ideas from the public. Definitely. I mean, I think we, um, the whole process of going through that with the architect will be to look at how we engage, how people engage with the space and the programming and how they come into the building and how we, our front desk is serving or not serving well. Um, so, but it's also just looking at um, upgrades. So like this paint, we haven't had any fresh paint for 12 years and we haven't, we have carpeting that needs to be replaced. And so, you know, kind of looking at um, refreshing and also thinking about if there's some things that we need to change that would make the space work better than it than it has been. So we will be asking we, we probably will form some some focus groups is what I'm thinking. Um well I I guess um I just wanted to, well, one of the things that, that didn't go through that maybe we want to ask Elder Vision for is that I requested furniture for outside so that we can have outdoor seating so for people to, you know, hang out. Um, I feel like the building is not as welcoming in its appearance either from the outside that we could have plants and seating outside and people could have lunch outside. and play cards outside or play chess outside and um, that we also have a green space at the end of this building that can be used um, in, in a better way, like that it's not being utilized um, very much. And so, um, I, you know, I just uh, would like to purchase some furniture that can be, uh, that wouldn't be left out all the time, but it would be uh, available for people to, to also use the outdoor space mm -hmm. here. Um, and, and again, I can't help but say make sure that people can get in their chairs that they're age friendly. Yes. Um, and the other, the, the other thing was that I I'd asked for all new toilets because they're too low. Okay, so um, yes, that that is always first on my mind <laughs> as the director of aging services is that it be yeah. age friendly. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you had to itemize what? you wanted for capital improvements. Now, what Donna said, you were saying, ask people in the public what they wanted as capital improvements? Is no, that what you said? The architecture. Oh, uh, about an each, yeah, yeah okay. what would, what people like and don't like, yeah, and okay. if they have well, what, ideas. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to get that clear because I wasn't sure about that. Right. No. Dennis? Um, I just wanted to piggyback on that. I think it's a great thing for Elder Vision. But I've been thinking for some time when I was in New York at the Met Life buildings down on Avenue C, which is up. Um, the outdoor space, I mean, it's, you, you feel like you're in a park in the middle of the city because the buildings are on the outside. But um, the point for me would be they had permanent like cement checkers chess things mm -hmm. that were built out so yeah. you don't have to bring things in and out mm -hmm. that and, and, and they had a bunch of other stuff and, and the place was filled with people <coughs> sitting playing games the right. you know kids were doing this and I thought a, a few what I would call permanent kind of things sure. so that all the people that have to do is bring their chess pieces or bring their backgammon pieces or bring their whatever mm -hmm. and, I think some of the stuff is what in the Updated Pulaski Park that's permanently outdated. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, so um, I am working with Western Mass Pollinators um, on some mm -hmm. programming um, around getting people involved in what they're trying to do is build a pollinator pathway throughout mm -hmm. the city okay. and that this would be one of the hubs, um, oh. but that we would also have some potentially some raised garden beds here um, that we might be able to have, you know, an herb garden for cooking and things like that, but um, but also potentially redesigning the, the park, the little park space that we have to allow for more outdoor seating and more pollinator plants, so. 
Um, so I'm sort of looking at all of those kinds of things, indoor and outdoor. Um, and then we've been adding um, a lot of programming, um, so much that we um, were sort of short on space, <laughs> um, which is a good thing. And um, the upgrade of the old library into an art studio is going to be finished before the end of March. Um, but before then, we've even already started having um, different kinds of classes in there. Um, and so I don't know if people are aware of, you know, you, you see in the Chronicle, but, um, you know, we had a ukulele class and then we needed to add two and three more and now we're adding drumming and we're, so um, things that people are participating in are, you know, filling up and then we're, we're really seeing that people are responding. So that gives us a lot of information about what we need to be adding. So. The bird feeders, I think would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there's a rule about um, bears and bird feeders, right? But yeah, um, we would just have to make sure that. Um, Take them in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll there are. I don't know. There's a lot of. Bears, there's a lot of birds living in the um, overhang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the in the the wraparound driveway. In the, yeah. There's also nobody that really takes care of our gardens, correct? I mean, it's been we do have years. Well, so we do have some volunteers, yeah. 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 But the city does. The city does maintain. But I will be meeting with we need David Pomerantz. We need weird people to weed. Yeah. Yeah. Is what yeah. we need. And that's right. hard for older people to do. Yeah. With the raise, but I like that raise that. Yeah. Idea. Yeah, but the existing I understood part, what you were referring to. But that's yeah. the existing. Well, another use for raised raise beds is so people don't have to mm -hmm. end up. Okay, um, anything else people want to bring up, Jean? I have two things. One, I decided, because I know that, um, that, at least my understanding, I think the neighbors is looking for a new site, right? Mm -hmm. Raise your voice a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little louder? Oh, Northampton Neighbors is looking for a, a new site. I just thought, like, I think it's good for everybody to just have an idea about what, what is centered here. So um, I, I thought I would bring, just mention that. And the other thing is that um, I wondered if you could, what, you know, the people who came in to talk about the tech teams, um, I, I, I'd like to, I wonder if we could, you could just tell us who manufactured the floor and like, because I'd like to at least go online and see if there's complaints from other places or if there are ways that um, the installation could affect the sound, you know, um, because that they presented a very well organized mm -hmm. and thoughtful um, amount of information, and I, I'd like to take the time mm -hmm. to examine what they had to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You want to go? Well, to, um, so I did that, um, getting some more information. So the flooring, apart from the three thousand dollars that it cost to refinish, it was twelve hundred dollars. It's called Marley, M-A-R-L-E-Y. If you go online, it's it's say it's the world's largest professional dance for dance troops venues, Broadway, New York. Uh -huh. um, they have multiple products um, specifically for dance ballroom um, sort of thing. So it's not a fly by night thing. I don't know what kind. I do want to go look because they they have multiple products. Um, I mean, but I, even on their website, it says for tap specifically, it says uh, um, if if t if the taps are scratched, it may damage even their flooring. So I mean, it has it right on their product specifications when I look at it. Um, and so when the Northampton Arts Trust um, and I don't, I don't I left that information at home in conjunction with another person oh. made the recommendation oh, so, for... So Lisa and probably Jen Collins? From the no, trust. Joanne. I can't remember her name. But anyway, so... Well, yeah. I mean, having had a very small amount of damp of tap background, it is not very satisfying not to hear us yeah. the right sound. I think but anyway, it's, it's M -A -R -L -E -Y. of what they're yeah. used to. Uh -huh. And that it's a matter of adjusting to something different right. than they're used to. But wherever 
tap dancers go to perform, like at Academy of Music, they have to bring their own flooring. And this is the kind of flooring that they have to bring, uh -huh. yeah, that they would be bringing. And so um, I guess I don't want to, um, I don't want to give you the impression that there is another, rec there's, there's any recourse here. There's not another choice. We've, we've purchased special flooring that's for tap dancers, that's for, for them. That's for tap dancers? And they're now? Really? But, but the, the safety issues you mentioned earlier, right. so I heard well, that. So but there's, I, there's a way to deal with the safety Yes, right? we, that seems to be a we would install it wall to wall in a room and it would be for, they would be able to use the whole room right. and we've been planning to do it in the front room and then that way they have what they need and everyone else who uses the other room can have what they need. Um, I don't really know what else to do. I mean, I, I, I feel like we've purchased high-end tap dancing flooring. <laughs> I right. don't so what was the feedback you said that you consulted with they, the, the instructor? Carol. Uh, Carol um, she she um, agreed to use the flooring. She agree, agreed to to try and encourage her class to be open-minded about it. Um, but um, it's not what she's used to either. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, it's a wood floor that is being damaged, and the okay, mayor okay. feels I should protect it. And mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to meet a lot of different groups' needs. And um, it's what other dance studios are doing. So I don't really know what else to do. I can't put in another wood floor that just for them. Um, Kathy, did you have a question? I, I, I did, and, and I appreciate the, the, the difficulty of, of the situation. I mean, no way to micromanage, but I did go on the site and um, it seemed like 90% of the floors that they talked about on the side said wow. great flooring for everything except tap. Mm -hmm. Is it, and, and you've probably already looked at this, but let me just get out of my system. Is it at all possible that we got the wrong flooring inadvertently? Is it possible that the, the numbers or something, mm -hmm. something happened and we didn't get the right flooring that is? I, Tap, is it at all possible? I will check into it, but yeah. my mm -hmm. assistant um, did the research. She spoke to them. They um, they recommended this flooring for Tap. For Tap, we bought remnants, um, and so we cannot return them. That was the other thing I was going to ask. Is there any warranty period? Mm -hmm. Is there any sort of recourse in terms of mm -hmm. that this is not no. it's not something that is satisfactory? Um, that you said it was for tap, mm. and yet we're, you mm -hmm. know, like, mm. can an argument been, be made to return it to them all? We can't return it, mm. whether it's the wrong flooring or not. But beyond the really sound, it sounded like some of the other concerns that were mentioned consistently were the safety issues, which are yeah. going to be addressed in, mm. in the long run, and the space being small, it's going to be addressed. So those two are going to come off the table. Yes. And the floor is the floor, and it sounds like it's an adjustment period. And it's going to address the yoga and the Tai Chi because they're going to be able to use the wooden floor. They, they, you know, it's not like the wooden floor is not going to be used. It's just not going to be beat up by tap. And what Dennis said was really interesting that, that I didn't realize is that if your taps are old and they're, 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 they could, you know, we can't monitor what people have on their shoes. Mm -hmm. So if they're old taps and they're... Well, we could maybe, require them to have new taps, but I still think it would damage but, the yeah, but floor. That's another thing that we haven't monitored is how, whose shoes are, are ruining the floor. There could be some that have, you know, sharp edges or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I hadn't even thought about that. Mm -hmm. but, well, they, yeah. they had to take a lot of wood off. I'll just tell you yeah. that, that um, I should have taken a before and after picture, but... And, I also think it's not a plastic floor. I know somebody talked twice about it being plastic. I think it's a rubber floor. It's, it's a like marmoleum or something. Marmoleum. It's a composite. Um, yeah. Um, but it's a floor made for tap. I mean, not, I'm not a tap floor expert. That's pretty, I'm sure. So. 
But well, Google Marley, M A R L E Y. You'll find out more than you need to know. Well, and yeah. so I, had, I had been looking when they were talking, and Marley is actually similar to. If you're talking a Marley floor. That's like talking about a jacuzzi. Marley is a brand name, right. which actually is not right. available at all anymore. Oh. The brand name, but they still work everything off of that. But then I'm just looking at this rubber flooring ink, and the only one that's made for. Yeah. Tap is Adagio. Um, they have lots of other ones that are a little bit like this and a little bit like that, but they're not really made for tap. And you know, I mean, it's yeah, it's so just. I think it. I think we should make sure. Did we get the right, right. thing? And if we didn't, right. they have a valid. Not if it's a remnant. Huh. Um, she said it's a remnant. Well, it's a remnant, but was right, the right, but it should still the have a remnant name. for right. the knee. Right. Right. The question. Okay, Don. Um, I would think it's from Stage Step. Is the name yeah. of the company? That's the name of the company. Right. They also sell Roscoe. And what was it called? What, do we have the name Stage of the actual Step. product? Is what we're looking for, not okay. the seller, but the actual product. The model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I recognize Donna, please. Mm -hmm. The Zumba class has been using it since it was installed, and it was it's fine to dance on in that. Uh, for a Zumba class, mm -hmm. there, it hasn't, there haven't been any problems with it, mm -hmm. and actually the Zumba teacher was familiar with that that kind of floor being used for dance purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we take the safety issues off. The, the I think the safety floor. issues mm -hmm. because it's not covering the entire floor. floor. That's the only yeah. thing I could think of that it's. I mean, right. because well, that's, that's what I need to respond to. And we never intended for it to be in there yeah. this long. Right. Well, my point, yeah. my point was really that I felt like we should have a discussion about right. there was a lot of information presented to us as board members and, um, and it, it felt you know, we should... I like, felt like we glossed over it. Yeah. Maybe. We just yeah. moved on. So, well, um, so, well, we weren't supposed to... We're not supposed to discuss it. Not in front of you. No, I didn't, I didn't mean this is an other. <laughs> but why have it be presented if we're not going to, you know, discuss it? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, the point of public comment is for them to make a public comment. But I understand that, you know, for us listening, it was like, well, they raised valid points or points that we have questions about. At some point, they want to have an answer to this. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, an answer to this. I got some of the answers to respond to this, Mr. At Mr. Adams has sent a very short thing, which is where okay. I got the information about the dance floor, the cost, that sort of thing. I have a little more information, I just didn't bring it with me. So, uh, I, if what I hear you're saying is, can we put it on the agenda to discuss and can, uh, so that we have an understanding, right. so that if nothing else, we also can explain <coughs> to people, right. Right. well, here's, Here's the facts, you know, because there's people's feelings and emotions about it, and they're all completely valid, and uh, you know, because that's the way they feel. It's that it's not right or wrong, or it's not wood. Yes, it's not wood, uh, you know. But then the question is, well, you know, do real tappers tap on it? Like you said, Casey, um, you know, when I did my research, uh, they still sell things, but it's also Roscoe's. I'm not sure what you're looking at, but um, but. It's, but we had bought it through, um, like you had said, second, second step. Second step. Um, stage step. But it said stage step. But it said specifically tap something, something, something. But they had different floorings for different kind of dances. And so the answer I didn't know was what was the particular remnants that we got because they have like eight different products. Roscoe has another seven different products, uh, which is not you know, and that part I don't know. But, but they, they but they told. Joanne. Yeah, they told Joanne. Ordered, we right. ordered, we Joanne, wanted. that's her name. Joanne Brooks. Oh, well, she's the, oh, here. oh, okay. She's, oh, I thought she was Joanne at the. You know, Joanne Brooks, here. that's what it was. Okay. Well, so the dance com floor company recommended this flooring and had remnants. Um, and and we, have, we have enough to cover the whole floor. Yes. Is that the right location? Yes. yes. Where, what room is going to be the right floor? In front of them. So what I would like to do is install it in the front room as a, in a temporary way so that when we do the space use study, if it is determined that it would be better to have it in another room, that we can take it up and move it. But it, but it would be, B 
being used and it would be available for TAP to happen. Um, and then if we decide that's going to stay there, then we'll, we'll make sure we install it permanently. But um, the activity room then will just be wood. It will be a, a no street shoes room. People who are doing yoga will not be lying down on grit. Um, and it will, you know, I've ordered a lot of benches so people can change into their, their workout shoes. Um, we're just really trying to sort of upgrade the experience that people have when they come and work out, and this will serve a lot of different needs. Um, so, you know, they may not be happy with this, um, but I do think that they will adjust to the sound. It's just different. And some other places have tried things like um, um, thin, plywood and things like that and actually dulls the sound more than this flooring. Because one of my friend's wife teaches tap that or she used to teach she retired but um, he had made some kind of a wooden floor because he um Paul Islanian because they have tap dancers sometimes mm -hmm. come from jazz but you know so yeah yeah so you know he has they have a wooden floor they put down on on the um at the at the place at the, at the spare time bowl. But they put down another floor. Yeah. So, so jo Joanne um, spoke with several different places. Um, so we didn't just talk to one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I go to Jean's point, something, something's happened. Mm -hmm. Can we respond to yeah. that writing? Yeah. Sure. Um, Michael has a question or comment. <laughs> I have absolute faith in Joanne that she did her homework. I have less faith in salespeople. <laughs> I wouldn't I be surprised. I don't know that this happened. I wouldn't be surprised if we had some stuff there. Oh, shit, it's fine for Pat. You know, I think that the questions that have been raised will allow us to speak to the people. I know three of them well, and I know they'll be on to me as friends and neighbors. If I could speak intelligently about the things that some of you have already learned, it just makes it easier to be a sort of ambassador mm -hmm. on behalf of this place. And I think that's all people are asking. Mm -hmm. Or interpreter. Not, not trying to question their judgment. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I can do the work that I'm supposed to do as a constant mm -hmm. aging member more effectively the more I know. Mm -hmm. I appreciated what you sent out before, and it already on me um, to some extent. Which raises the second thing. It's a little bit uh, out of order. You mentioned, before everybody got here, this incident um, with the man who was upset. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to let everybody know, only because, knowing the Gazette, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't put something silly in the paper, if he's going to the Gazette. So if we were for, armed with what you know, we'd be able to address it. Um, so, I don't care how or when you do it, but if others knew what we heard, I mean, I feel um, but I'm not sure everybody else uh, would be able to respond. Somebody said, oh yeah, they kicked me out of Puerto Rican. What do you say if you don't know the issue? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, well that didn't happen. I know it didn't happen, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying. No, I know, I'm just saying to the room, that didn't happen. But I didn't right. know what the issue was. Yes. Am I the only person who didn't hear it? Yeah. Oh. No, so I'll, I will, on camera. Um, so, um, Young and Heart performed this morning. Um, several people called and registered for lunch ahead of time. One of them had a four-year-old with them. Um, another person had um, family members who were probably in their 30s um, and I had to let them know that the dining room is reserved for people over 55 that we allow people who are not seniors to take lunch to go um, and that also this was not advertised as an event that you could bring your family to or bring children to um, that this was a senior only event and that is because if we opened up this event to the whole city with young at heart giving a free chorus we knew that we would not be able to accommodate that many people mm -hmm. 
and that was not our agreement with Bob Silman. Um, we will have events that are open to the public. We are having events that are open to the public, and we will have events that are bring your family or bring your grandkid today or um, read to a child. I'm talking with the school district about that, um, where we're bringing children into the building, but people will know that that's what's going on, and they won't have to participate if they don't want to be around children, and they will be able to participate if they do want to, and they'll be able to bring their grandchildren, but we can't have people bringing children just to everything, um, or bringing their children, um, parking them here while they do other things in the building. Um, it's just, it's, um, we've, it's not meant to be, um, you know, off-putting in any way. And so I didn't approach those people when they came to listen to the concert, but when it came time to go into the dining room, I felt like I needed to say something. Um, but we, we then were alerted to the fact that we, there was an error in our advertising also mm -hmm. that, that was confusing. Yeah. And so, but this gentleman felt very um, angry and upset um, and did go to the mayor and threatened to go to the Gazette. So, you know, people don't want to be, they don't, they want to, they think, they don't think that the whole thing through, they may have gotten misinformation, they may have not been asked when they signed up on the phone the right questions, and so we have to look at all the pieces of how things happen, um, and all we can do is apologize and say we're sorry that this was your experience, this is not how we intended things to go, but these are the reasons why. Um, so anyway, I, I think that, you know, I'll, I'll, that things happen every week that people are upset about. It's, it's just, that's the nature of running a social service agency in a big city. Um, and so when you hear, if someone approaches you with a complaint, I think the, the best thing to do is just tell me you've got this complaint or you've been asked these questions and I can give you information because you're hearing one side of it and sometimes people don't always understand all the, all the reasons. Um, so, and also they are seeing different things happening so they think that they're being discriminated against in some way because they're like, well, that person's here and that person's here and, you know, why am I being singled out? But they might not understand. So I will, I will write an article for the Chronicle. And, and, they, and people who know, like, I, don't, I think they're young at heart people, fam, a lot of family, a lot of people come in to watch grandparent, blah, blah, blah. So it's unless somebody's a caretaker, you said, of somebody in the Younger Heart course, or somebody coming in that is watching them, then they shouldn't be there um, just being there during rehearsal? The Younger Heart course has been informed that they can't they can't invite okay. people who okay. are under 55 to okay. come here. Okay. Um, they know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, I, I think that somebody bringing a four-year-old um, under the right circumstances is mm -hmm. a great thing. Yeah. Um, and I want to support that. And I don't know if you all remember, but when I first came on, everyone was afraid I was going to do those things. So I've been holding off a little bit. But um, I think we just need to, we need to do those things in the right way. Mm -hmm. And we need to be thoughtful, just like we're trying to be thoughtful about everything that we're doing. Um, you know, and I, I also have to say, like, it's a little disheartening when we are working really hard to have people attacking us without all the information. So I, you know, we have to step back and say, okay, you don't have all the information, um, but people don't always want to hear what you have to say. So um, just know that we are, we are doing everything we can to keep people happy. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually possible, but we're trying. You should have rented the Pines Theater for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would just say that in case, Today, I mean, unfortunately, is, is a lesson for the next time the chorus elects to do a free concert in terms mm -hmm. of matching expectations that this is not young at heart, free and open to the public. Right. Yeah. Know, very much a controlled environment for mm -hmm. 
members of the senior center or whatever the right language Seniors is. Seniors coming to lunch and then, then have a quick right. concert. Right, the, the, the yeah. concert itself is yeah. a separate it's a separate entity from lunch and how you manage that, I think it's mm -hmm. unfortunate and then it is, you know. Well, we advertised it as a come to the concert and come for right. lunch. And, yeah. um, and th those people were doing both. Yes. Yeah. So and but, but, but I think it's, it's, it's a lesson because it's the chorus. Right. It was, <coughs> Me and Michael sing it, but what is the issue? Well, well no, 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 that's not true because actually it, it happens in a lot of things. And so uh, even today, that the chorus just just attracts a much yeah. bigger. Crowd. Yeah, but it, it's ha it's happening oh, in sure. other yeah. in other events too, and I think people, you know, people want to have events where they can bring their family. Sure. And so we, we clearly need to be doing more yeah, of that. Right. And and so we will be. Mm -hmm. And I think that once we start to um, do that, it will sort of highlight, oh, this is for yeah. when family, so maybe I need to ask this time because it doesn't say that. Like, so mm -hmm. I just think that it speaks to a need that we need to fill. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're going to do that. Okay, I would like to adjourn the meeting if people are ready. Anybody want to make a motion to do that? Okay. I move here, please. And Donna seconds. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thanks.